Hello everyone and welcome to module 4 of uh, chapter 33. Uh, this is going to be a relatively uh, short chapter or at least the coverage, the, the topics that we will be studying are going to be almost just half of it. The topics that I'm going to be covering are section uh, 33.2, interference of light. And maybe I should write them down first. The section that will be covered are Uh, section 33.2 and 33.4 and 33.6 okay 33.2 is the interference of light and 33.4 is the single uh, uh, single slit diffraction and uh, 33.6 is the circular aperture I'm gonna go over them very quickly but mainly I'll be concentrating on solving problems examples and uh, uh, and uh, uh, some of the problems of the homework. Uh, please, like I said uh, last time, please take the time to read the chapter, read those sections before you actually watch the video because I don't cover everything in the video. I, I basically concentrate on uh, solving problems as you may have noticed. Uh, anyway, so we begin with this first section, the interference of light. Uh, it is an experiment that was done by uh, Young uh, in, uh, I think, in the late 18th century, early 20th, uh, 19th century, something like that. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of consequences to that experiment, but I'm going to tell you what he did. Well, wh what he did was um, he had a, 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 a screen that has double slits like that. Okay, so these are holes here, and the distance between them is very small. I'm talking here... A fraction of a millimeter something like less than 0.1 millimeter or something like that okay and so very very tiny and then here at the far away distance say about maybe one meter away one and a half meter away you have a screen here okay and what he did he uh, shined a beam of light like that any light would work for that matter of course uh, well okay so uh, what will happen is that um, on the screen, well, here is, imagine you have a central axis right here, right there, okay? Uh, what he noticed that he saw fringes. What that means, he saw bright and dark fringes like that on both sides. The both sides are symmetric here, like that, okay? Let me, let me show you a picture of what he did. I think there is one on... Uh, there we go. So this is something like that. See, if you th uh, the green one, the green color, we'll call them bright, and the black one or the dark one, uh, the black one are the dark fringes. Okay, the bright one are constructive interference, and the dark one is destructive interference. There is another, a better picture that I'm looking at it in my book here. I believe on probably the third page. Uh, this one, but there is a better one. There it is right here. Okay, there we go. So if you can see here, here is the uh, the screen with a double slit here, and this is the those uh, purple lines is a um, a, uh, a light with a certain frequency, some coherent light with uh, uh, monochromatic light, and and then the the light wave would uh, penetrate the two slits. They interfere with each other, and then they form this pattern. Okay. The color here is not important. For laser beam, you'll see red, and for uh, green light, you'll see green, and so on. So anyway, so these, so if you look at this, the axis right here, this line right there, we can call it maybe the central axis, and this is the central maximum, which means that you have a total con uh, constructive interference. So you got a, a central bright. They call that re uh, this fringe a central bright. Then you get dark and then bright, dark and bright and so on. But the brightness goes down in, in intensity, okay? But it's still, it oscillates between dark and bright like that, okay? And every bright is a number. So we have, this is M equals zero for the central one, M equals one for the next one, third and so on, okay? Same thing, of course, it's symmetric up and down. So this is identical downward this way, okay? So uh, the, the dark one here are destructive interference and the bright one is a constructive interference got it okay uh, why this is important well there is a lot of reason why it's important philosophically this proved beyond the shadow 
that uh, light is indeed a wave. You can read about it. There's, there's a lot of philosophy behind that, but that's not our concern. The, the main reason that you study that is uh, with this experiment, it actually allows you to calculate the wavelength of light. For example, let's say I give you, I tell you the wavelength of, um, say, um, uh, red light. I'm not sure how much is it. I think it's around, uh, oops, uh, I think the, the wavelength of it is roughly, don't quote me on it, let's say it's 700 nanometer. Okay, so that's 700 times 10 to the negative 9 meter. I mean, how do we know that? How do we measure a wavelength like that? You see what I'm saying? Well, the double slit experiment, the young double slit experiment, allows us to do that. Okay, so that's one way why it is really useful. It actually allows you to calculate the wavelengths of electromagnetic waves. Anyway, whether it's laser, uh, X-ray, uh, visible region, gamma, whatever, whatever. So it allows you to calculate that through this experiment, and that's why it's important for us, in the, technologically speaking, in that sense. There is, a, like I said, there is a philosophical. Uh, a lot of philosophical ideas behind the double slit experiment that you can read about, but I'm not going to cover in this video. Okay, um, so uh, let me just uh, go through the derivation, well, not the derivation, I'm just going to show you the important formulas here, and then we'll start doing problems. <clears throat> um, I'm looking at my notes here. So let me just show you the setup again. Here's the screen. It's not a very good screen. I'll try to make it as vertical as I can. Ugh, I can never get used to that stylus pen. But anyway, there we go. This is the central region right here. Imagine if you have a, a, a ray of light going... Uh, going here from this to some spot here. Assume this spot is bright, for example. And then you have another ray of light coming from here to the same spot. So they meet right here. And let's assume this is bright. So this is ray one and this is ray two. Notice that ray one is shorter than ray two. By how much? By this much. You see what I'm saying? Ray two is larger by this much. If the distance between the two slits is small letter D, I think your book called it D. Let me look it up very quickly. I'm almost sure it's D. Uh, gotta be. I can't see it now. Yes, I think it is. Okay. So if the distance between the two slits is D, which is in the order, like I said, of the less than one millimeter, right? So, uh, and this is angle theta. So this distance here, the, the difference between them uh, would be equal to we call it delta, and that's equal to d sine theta, okay? And if this is bright, let's say this is bright, which means it is a constructive interference, then the next one below it is dark, and so, well, maybe in between is dark right here, and then this one is bright, and so on. You see what I'm saying? Until you get to the central one, the central one is bright, okay? All right. Um, so there is a relationship here between the the uh, the, the angle, the the, uh, the, uh, the the slit width, or excuse me, the, the distance between the two slits, and also the distance between the slits and the uh, the screen. I think our book called it L as well. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, and this this relationship is this um, d sine theta is equal to m lambda. Again, m is what? m is the fringe number. So this one is m equals zero here. And then the first dark fringe, excuse me, the, the first bright fringe here is m equals one. The second bright fringe, m equals two, and so on. So this is the fringe number, if you will. Lambda here is the wavelength of light that is hitting the slits in this direction. Okay. Okay, this is basically what we want to find sometimes, right? We are interested in. And then you have the angle that I just told you about. And then D is the distance between the slits, okay? For, uh, so this is for bright or constructive interference. For dark, it's D sine theta M plus one half 
lambda, okay? And the reason is because uh, peak meets trough and trough meets peak, so that uh, that's basically the phase difference between them is half a lambda, if you remember from last chapter, and that produces a dark fringes or basically destructive interference, and that will be dark. Got it? Okay. Another thing, if I am interested in finding, let's say I am tagging, say, uh, this bright one right here, okay? And let's say it has a, uh, let me just delete those. And let's say, for example, I am interested in finding, okay, so let's say I'm interested in finding the height or how far is it from the central fringe, okay? And so this is some mth, if you will, bright or dark, whatever, okay? So this the height or, the, or the, this this is from the bright through from the excuse me from the central bright. I'm going to call it y sub m. Okay, and with some geometry that you can uh, you can follow in the book, you'll end up with that y sub m is equal to m lambda l over d. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to put in all the formulas before I start working on. Uh, some of the problems. So this one for the um, for the bright fringe. How far is it from the central? For dark, however, it's the same thing except you replace the, the same thing except that you replace the m with m plus one half. So it becomes uh, y sub m. I'm call it dark just to distinguish it. Is equal to m plus one half <coughs> uh, lambda l over Okay. These are the equations so far for this section. Let me give you an example. Uh, so it says here, uh, screen separated from the double slit source. So screen separated from double slit. Basically, he's talking about this distance L, right? From the uh, source, um, by 1.2 meters, okay? And the the separation between the two slits, this D right here, is 0 0.03 millimeters. See how small it is? Okay. Uh, now, it says the second order bright, okay, second order, which means m equals 2, second order bright is 4.5 centimeter from the center line, which is the central bright, okay. There are two parts of this problem, center line, A, he says, uh, determine lambda of the light. See how useful this experiment is? So, for example, uh, let's say I have a green light, okay, or some whatever light. Let's say I have a green light. I would like to know its wavelength. How do I know that? Well, all I need to do is you shine it through this apparatus here, this apparatus right here, and then uh, I would pick, for example, one of the bright fringes. I would measure the distance from the, uh, from the, to the central bright here, and from there, I can use this formula, solve for uh, uh, lambda, and I know everything else. I know that order is m, you know, and then I know the length, because I already said I am the one who set up the experiment, so I know all about it. I know the distance between the two slits, and and from all of that, I can find lambda. You see what I'm saying? Very interesting way of uh, finding, I mean, actually, ingenious way, very simple, but yet ingenious. So find the lambda for that. Uh, so we know that uh, y for bright is equal to m lambda l over d. And then I would just solve for lambda, dy over ml, and then I would just plug it in. So it's going to be 0 0.03 times 10 to the negative 3, so all in meters, right? Uh, times y is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by uh, 2, the order, he said it's a second order, remember? 
right there. He had a second order. And this is the, uh, uh, the what is that? The Y. The, uh, how, the, how far is that from the bright fringe? Uh, times L, which is 1.2 meters. And from, from there, I can calculate it. And it turned out to be 560 nanometer. Okay? There we go. Simple. All right. Part B. He says, calculate the distance. Calculate. Distance between the bright fringes. Oh, sorry. Bet uh, adjacent between adjacent bright fringes. Okay. The adjacent one. Well, how do I do that? In other words, let me show you the picture again. So let's say, for example, let me just delete that. So let's say this is, um, let's say this is M equals, uh, let's make it one. And then this one equals two. He wants to know the distance between those two. So say, kind of a simple problem, you know, like delta Y, you know. So all I need to do is you go Y sub two minus Y sub one. Of course, Y sub two, you just get it from here right there. And you just plug in two, uh, you know, from here. So you plug in M equals two. You already know what lambda from part A, and then also, then you get y1, and then you just take the difference between them. See what I'm saying? It's kind of a simple problem. You can go with uh, 3 and 4 if you want, and you'll get the same answer, right? Because it's just uh, it's consecutive, you know what I mean? Anyway, that would be one way to do it. So basically, let me write it down uh, in a formal way. Uh, y sub m plus 1 minus y sub m, that would be equal to what? Um... Uh, that will be equal to, here is the, uh, here's the equation, so that will be equal to m plus 1 lambda L over D minus m lambda L over D. Then you just do the algebra, you basically, the m's cancel out, and then uh, you'll have, uh, <coughs> uh, what is it, uh, lambda L over D, and you just plug in the numbers. Uh, from part A, we got it to be 560, 5.6 times 10 to the, uh, what is it, negative 7, multiplied by the L is 1.2, divided by the fringe distance, um, excuse me, the, uh, the slit distance, and that's 3 times 10 to the negative 5, and then I would just calculate that, and it turned out to be 2.2 centimeters. You got it? Simple. Okay. Next. Um... Maybe I'll, uh, let me move on to the single slit experiment. Again, please take the time to read it in the book. I'm just going to throw in the uh, main, it's very similar to the, uh, to the interference uh, of the double slit, but the single slit basically looks something like that. Here is the slit uh, or the screen with the slit right there. And then you have the screen right here. And when you shine a beam of light in this fashion like that, as the light source, okay, and and the, uh, we'll we'll assume the slit width. I think it's a. He calls it, isn't it a? I'm gonna say a for now, not d. Okay, and what will happen? So light will uh, emanate all over here, and what you will notice is that you will see a central bright, the same thing, and then and then they go like that you know, order M1, uh, uh, M equals 1, and so on, okay? And this is the central axis, if you will. You, you have a similar uh, similar thing, okay? And, um, and then the important formula for that is that if you want to know, uh, I'm trying to find it. Slit. Sorry, let me go back to the book. I am doing all of this without looking at uh, my notes, but uh, well, let me show you. Uh, 
I think the book only mentions how to locate the uh, the dark uh, the dark French, and it is given by the following formula, <coughs> and that is uh, y sub m. This is for dark. Okay, uh, is equal to uh, m l lambda over a. Okay. Let me let me make sure I got that. Uh, oh, we are in uh, three. Let's go to four. There it is. Okay. So here it is. So if you have a single slit, you see the single slit right there, and then you shine a beam of light, and you, this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is what you see on the screen right here. So you see a uh, a central bright fringe right here, and then they kind of go, uh, uh, they um, they go down in intensity, as you can see here. And to locate how far is one of the dark fringes from the central bright is the one that is given by the formula I just showed you. It should be here somewhere. He probably uses different notation. Um, right here. Okay, it says, uh, okay, rather than M, he calls it P. He said, oh, position for position. For position of the dark fringes is given by that. Okay, let me let me show you an example uh, how to work it out. Uh, uh, it says here, I have a lambda, I have light. Of wavelength 580 nanometer uh, incident uh, on a uh, on a slit of width 0.3 millimeter. Okay, uh, screen away at two meters. Uh, he's asking now find the position of the first dark fringe of the first dark fringe fringe and the width of the central bright okay all right how do we do that well we know that that for dark uh, we have a sine theta is equal to m lambda so that means sine theta equals m lambda over a and we have uh, pretty much everything here so of course the m here would be one because he said first dark and lambda is given to us it's equal to uh, 580 nanometer times 10 to the negative 9 and divided by the width is given to us 0.3 times 10 to the negative 3 and then we calculate that and when we do that let me let me calculate my calculator I have here 580 I hope you're calculating with me uh, divided by 0.3 exponent Three. Answer, it's going to be um, 0 0.001933, and then from there I can find the angle theta. Uh, however, notice that for the bright fringe, and I think we talked about that in the past, since the angle is so small, we use the, the small angle approximation, which is theta is almost equal to sine theta, and it's equal, uh, almost equal to uh, tan theta. Remember that? Okay, so in this case, we would have, I want to use tan theta, because tan theta is equal to y1, which is, you know, this is the distance we're looking for, over L, right? And that's equal to sine theta. So in this case, uh, we will have y1 over L is equal to uh, this number right here. So that will be, uh, what is it, uh, 1.93 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 
four, hold on, that will be uh, one, two, three, negative three here, and then we would just solve for y1, so that will be uh, L times 1.93 times 10 to the negative three, and then we we'll calculate that. Of course, L here is two meters, and then we would uh, get 3.87 times 10 to the negative three meters, okay? Now, what is the width? Now, remember, uh, we said that, uh, let me just go up a little bit. So here is, here is the, uh, how does this picture look like? Here is the single slit right here, right? Here is the screen right here, okay? So uh, it looks something like that. If I'm gonna draw it in a, in a diagram, I hope I'll be able to do it. So it gets bigger and then at the center, it's, uh, this is the brightest of all. And then it's symmetric on both sides. You see what I'm saying? It should be lower than that, but anyway. Okay, so um, the, the, the first, sorry. So here is the central axis. Here is the, the dark fringe would be some, somewhere here. This is Y1 right there. And that's Y1 as well, right here, right? So this distance here is this, from here to the central, right there. Well, the width of it is from here to here, right? So basically, I'm going to take this y1. He said, the second part of the problem, he said, find the width. Uh, so the width of it is basically 2y1. So I just multiply him. So that will be 2 times 3.87 times 10 to the negative 3. And that will give me 7.73 millimeter. Okay? That will be the width of that. Here in the problem, he says, fringe, uh, he said, um, find the position of the first dark fringe and the width of the central bright. Well, the central bright is basically this, from the first dark to, and the first dark from the other side. That distance would be the width of the bright. The bright fringe, that is. Got it? Okay. The last topic before I start doing some uh, problem, maybe picking up from the homework, and that is the uh, is called resolution and circular aperture. Okay, let me let me give you a simple example of what that means. I'm sure all of you have say driven on the highway in the middle of the night okay you've been driving for hours and it is very very dark let's say you are in a country uh, on a country road or whatever and it's very dark there is no light there and you're driving and at a far away distance in the dark you see a one spot of light coming towards you of course you assume it is let's say you're going now northbound this is a car coming uh say southbound because it is one spot of light, you may assume it's probably a motorcycle or something, right? As it gets sm uh, closer and closer, uh, you discover that it's not really one spot of light, but it's actually two lights, which is the headlight, the headlight of a car. You see what I'm saying? And you look at it, it's far away, you think it's a small car. It's not a motorcycle anymore. It's probably a small car coming towards you. And then as it gets closer and closer and close enough, <laughs> you discover it's a big giant semi, 18 wheeler coming to you, towards you with very, very far away to headlights because it's a very, very wide uh, vehicle. You see what I'm saying? So what made you think from the first place that it is one spot of light and then you thought it's two spots of light, you know, the headlights, and then now it is a huge big semi, you know, coming towards you when it gets close enough. What's happening here? Well, that has to do with your the nature of your eye. You know, the resolution that your eye is capable of. As a matter of fact, your eye, I mean, your eye is just an optical instrument. So the resolution of any optical instrument, whether it's a telescope, a microscope, a binocular, magnifying glass, any, absolutely any uh, camera for sure, uh, any optical instrument out there, uh, it has a certain resolution. And that's why I think the subject is interesting. I wanted to cover it in a, in a brief way. And uh, the circular aperture is basically 
uh, think of it like the objective lens of a microscope or the width of your pupil. Okay, so what does that mean? It, basically, the resolution here, uh, this topic, it tells you what is the minimum angle that you need in order for you to view something. Okay, let me give you another example. Uh, I have experienced this many times. I'd be, say, uh, hiking on the trail, and I would look at the faraway distance and I see a very large tree. Okay, I'm talking. So let's say the tree is a quarter of a mile or something like that. It's way over there, and I can see the big tree. Um, as you know, you're not going to see the leaves. All you see is just the hazy blue. You see what I'm saying? You're not seeing the individual leaf fluttering or something like that. You just see blue. A tree, of course, it looks like a shape of a tree. You know for sure it's a tree. But you're not seeing the leaves. Now, as you get closer, uh, you start seeing maybe black spots on the tree. And you say, hmm, what is that? What are those black spots? You make think it's a fruit or something. Uh, as you come closer and closer, you discover these are birds. So maybe there are 20 birds on the tree. But at, at far away, you didn't see the birds, even though there are black spots. And the contrast between green and black is very high, but you still didn't see them anyway. Uh, but as you get closer and closer, you start, you actually saw, you know, first you thought they are fruits, and then now they are birds, okay? A third example, um, you might be, um, let's say, uh, uh, you might be, again, might, let's say you are hiking and uh, in, in a grassy area and you see a lot of grass and uh, as you walk, um, I'm, I'm trying to bring an example of a mouse where you cannot see it from far away, but you get close enough, you actually see, you can see the width of the mouse. And, and so on. So anyway, <laughs> we, c we can go on about all of that. But I'll, I'll give you some examples, some actual problem that we can solve. And this is determined by a what is called the. Uh, I'm, I'm going to jump into the uh, to the to the uh, to the equation that is that uh, we need to um, use to solve such problems. Again, uh, it is in section um, thirty-three point six trying to find the equation that I'm referring you to. I can't find it. Oh, there it is, right here. Equation uh, 33.30. Should I go there first? Let me, let me go there first. Um, there we go. Circular aperture diffraction, he calls it in the book. Um, this is the equation that we are interested in. And this is called uh, Rayleigh's criterion. I don't know if your book uses this term, but I'm going to use it. So this is the equal one point. It comes out from differential equation. You have to take an advanced course in optics. I have taken that in the past when I was in graduate school. And then we go through some der derivation to get it. In uh, sophomore physics, like your course, he just, you know, just present the equation to you and tell you to accept it. But there is some uh, heavy duty derivation behind it, okay? Uh, and it's called Rayleigh's criterion. If I pronounce Rayleigh, I've always had difficulty pronouncing this name, but it's this one, Rayleigh. Rayleigh, is that how you pronounce it? Rayleigh's criterion. Okay, uh, I'm gonna refer to it as RC, okay? Rayleigh's criterion. And Rayleigh's criterion, basically this. Theta min is equal to 1.22 lambda over D. Okay, be familiar with this equation. Very nice equation to learn. So lambda here is the wavelength of light that you're dealing with. D is the um, diameter of the aperture. What does that mean? Well, the diameter, let's say you are looking at, uh, oh, here's one more example uh, to show you. Um, if you look at, I, you know, I have an, a binocular. I like to use a binocular rather than a telescope when I look at the night sky. You can see more things and you can control them with your hand. When you look at the closest star to us, which is the Alpha Centauri, okay, and you look at it through the binocular, uh, you only see one spot. You, know, you just see the star, that's it. But as a matter of fact, Alpha Centauri is actually a binary system, Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri. In other words, two, uh, two stars, but I don't see them, I just see one star. However, if I use a more powerful tel telescope, something like maybe, uh, I don't know, a 12 inch or 14 inch telescope or something like that, I should be able to see the two stars, the binary system. 
Same thing with Jupiter. Jupiter has four moons associated to it, you know, Ganymede, Eo, Callisto, and Europa. And when you look at it from the naked eye, you just see Jupiter. You just see one dot, you know, one big bright dot of Jupiter. Now look at it through a just a regular binocular, just a regular binocular you buy from Walmart. You will see four dots right on the same line, in a horizontal line. And those are the four moons of Jupiter, the one that Galileo was able to see. However, I can't see them with the naked eye. In other words, I cannot see them with the resolution of my pupil. Okay? But with the resolution of a binocular, you know, a regular binocular, uh, which has a... Uh, so I can, I'll, I'm able to see them. Again, it's all about the diameter, D here, of the aperture. Okay? So, theta min is the minimum angle subtended that you can that you can uh, uh, that you can have in order for you to see something let me give you a diagram of what I mean I'll show you what I mean I'm trying to find a diagram here it is let's say for example let's go back to this Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri so here is Alpha Centauri the two binary systems okay and here is Beta Centauri Alpha and Beta okay and they are far away they're really far away separated by I have no idea what the distance between them but I assume it's probably from the Earth to the Sun, or even more. And and here you are. Here is you looking at Alpha Centauri. Here is your eye. All right. Here is you looking at it. Well, your the width of your pupil is big D. Got it. And this is the distance. Of uh, between Alpha Centauri and uh, Beta Centauri, what should I call it? I'm going to call it W for now. Okay, this is the minimum angle right there. What Rayleigh Criterion says, there, uh, this is the minimum. Of course, the light coming from it. Of course, there is light with a certain lambda in it, right? Now, the light coming from it, the minimum angle that you are able to distinguish between the two, alpha and beta. Let me repeat it. The minimum angle that will enable you to distinguish between L alpha and beta is given by this formula. In other words, if it is smaller than the min, you're just going to see one, one star. You're not going to see two. Larger, well, you're going to see both. Larger and larger, you're going to see even both, more, and so on. You see what I'm saying? So it's, this is the minimum that will allow you to see, to distinguish between them, okay? I'll come back to this width here. There's another formula for the width, which basically uh, you simply multiply this number by 2L, but I'll come back to it. L being, sorry, L here being the distance between the Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri, uh, and the distance, excuse me, between you and the binary system, okay? I'll come back to this, but that's basically what that means. Let me give you an example. I have an example from another, just flip the pages quickly, <clears throat> there we go, this one's kind of a nice example, I like it, I'm going to write it down, bear with me, uh, so you have, uh, um, the, the name of it, the, the, the title of the example is a Human Eye versus Eagle's Eye. Okay? Uh, so we have a hand glider. Glider. Uh, the height is 120 meters. So you got this guy, a pilot on a hand glider. He is or she is 120 meters from the, from the ground. Okay? Uh, that is green light coming from the ground, which basically is looking at grass, you see what I'm saying? So the green light is uh, lambda is 555 five, five nanometer, kind of easy to remember, uh, uh, enters uh, I, the eye of the pilot, or the, the guy who's on the glider, through pupil, of course, through pupil, what else? That's kind of silly. Uh, with the, the, uh, the, the, what is the here? Um, I'm sorry, hold on. Uh, this unit, uh, excuse me, this uh, D is um, 2.5 millimeter. Yeah, okay, well, D here is 2.5 millimeter. 2.5 millimeter. Okay, that's the width of the pupil, the average width of a human pupil. 
Now the question is determine how far apart two point object two point two slash point two dash point object must be on the ground if the pilot is to have any hope of distinguishing between them. The pilot uh, to distinguish between them. Got it? Let me let me show you a picture of them. So here is the uh, Here's the glider. Oh, I don't know how to draw a pilot here. Here is the thing. And here is the guy right here. These are his eyes. I'm trying to draw eyes. Dot, dot. There we go. That's his hand right here, right? That's his body right there. You know what I mean. And then uh, here is the ground right here. And let's take two points. So here is, this is this light coming to from his eyes and this is the two points he says how far apart they should be what should I call that how far apart s or w what we'll call it s okay so he's looking at it let me let's read the problem again just to make sure that we both we all understand it okay so you get this hand glider the distance is 120, so the distance from the eye to the ground, 120, point, or 120 meters, that is. And the green light, so we did it with green light, because grass, green grass, enters the eye of the guy, the pupil, and his pupil width is 2.5, which is the average for a human. Uh, now he says, determine <clears throat> how far apart those should be. The, he said, determine how far apart two point object must be on the ground if the pilot to distinguish between them so we want to know that we want to know the, the distance how far apart they should be at the minimum all right let's say a mouse i mean i can draw here let's say you have a mouse here i know it's not drawn to scale uh how do you draw a mouse like this let's ignore the tail but there it is right so what what would be the width of that? That's actually a pretty good looking mouse, doesn't it? All right. So we want to know this angle, theta min. Okay. And according to Rayleigh's criterion, theta min is equal to 1.22 lambda over d. I got it all, right? So we go. Look at this. 1.22555 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by the, uh, the width of the pupil, the objective lens in general, and that would be, um, what is it equal to? 2.5 times 10 to the negative, uh, negative 2, it's a centimeter. And then once I do that, let me use my calculator. I hope you're working with me. I keep saying that. 555, negative 9, divided by uh, 2.5, negative 2 times 1.22 answer uh, 2.7 2.71 times 10 to the negative 5 what radian remember that right it's radian be careful I forgot to mention that it's radian all right and then well how do I find the distance s well I hope some of you know it by now look at this uh, look at this diagram here right here I'm going to flip, well, here, look. If I have a circle, and here is the human eye right here, right? Here, right here. Here is the, uh, the distance. Here is the mouse right there. So that's the width of the mouse. Here is the angle theta min. And if you remember from calculus, excuse me, not calculus, from uh, junior high geometry or something, this is S right here. 
and this is the distance L, shall we call it, or the height H, let's call it height H, because I'm calling it height H right here. So there is a relationship, remember, what is it? S equals H uh, theta, right? Remember? You know, radius of the circle. So we can do that. So S in this case equals to H theta min. Done. See that? So all I need to do is just plug it in. So that 120 times 2.71 times 10 to the negative 5. So I multiply this by 120 equal to uh, 0 0.00333. Um, what is it? Meters. Point zero zero. I hope I didn't. Uh, point three point three. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's about what is it? Um, um, did I make a mistake? I'm getting one zero, not two zeros. Let me let me repeat it again. I'm sorry. Uh, one point. I hope that I'm making mistakes. Let me do it again. Uh, two point seven one. E negative five um, times one twenty. Nope, got point zero zero. Hmm. Three point three centimeters. Um, you're probably screaming at me with the mistake that is obvious to you and it's not obvious to me. Let me let me do this calculation one more time. I want to make sure I've got it in it right. So I have here uh, five 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 e negative nine. Uh, multiplied by 1.22 uh, divided by divided by 2.5 e uh, oops uh, e negative 2 answer 2.5 yeah everything looks normal I am just gonna accept it I don't know I hope you have figured out the mistake I'm getting in my note 0 0.03 not 0 0.003 I don't know why I'm getting that Um, anyway, okay, we'll just accept it. So that makes it, what, uh, 0.3 centimeter, correct? You know, 1, 2. So the the distance have to be at a minimum 0.3 centimeter in order for it, for uh, for uh, for the human eye to distinguish it. Now, what about the eagle? Well, the eagle, the, the objective lens or the pupil of the eagle is 6.2 millimeter okay so we can do the same calculations and when we do it so we have to go back right here and do it for the eagle uh, I'm gonna have you do it but here is the answer that I've gotten in my notes and I hope you will discover my mistake I got uh, an answer here for the human is 3.3 centimeter and for the eagle, I got to do this exactly the same calculation. But for the eagle, you get 1.3 centimeter. In other words, the eagle is way better than the human in the sense that, uh, oh, I know what the mistake is. I got it. It is uh, the, oh, the, uh, you, you're probably yelling at me now, right? It, is, it should be negative three here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, the 2.5 millimeter not centimeter i apologize so that should be negative three here and that will give me um 3.3 .3 right there i apologize for that and and this will give me that i hope you are you can you're able to do that okay let's move on to the next one sorry about that okay um maybe i should do you know maybe i should just uh Stop here, stop babbling, and then uh, let's do some problem from the homework. Uh, the problem that you have on the homework, number 6, 7, 16, 25, 26, 27, 29. Let's see, I'll, I'll pick some of the, maybe the harder ones. Uh, let me pick, uh, number 6 looks fine, easy. 7 looks fine, I think I did a problem similar to it. Uh, number eight, I think I did a, one similar to it as well. Um, oh, yeah, let's do 16. At least this one. Okay. The homework is relatively easy. I hope it is. All right, let's do some problems here. Yeah. 
Number 16. <clears throat> Oh, you want to go to the book? Let's do the book very quickly. Uh, chapter 33. We have one more chapter, guys, and we're done with the course. Uh, not this one. Chapter 16. There we go. Number 16. There we go. Says a helium neon laser okay uh, the wavelength is 633 nanometer <clears throat> illuminates a single slit and is observed on the screen 1.5 meter behind the slit the distance between the first and second minima okay minima which means like what's minima minima is uh, your book language for dark okay so yeah maxima for bright minima for dark so the first and second distance between the two dark fringes consecutive or adjacent dark fringes uh, minima in the diffraction pattern is 4.75 millimeter. Then he's asking for <clears throat> what is the width of the slit A. You know what I mean? All right. So not a bad problem, as you can see. So maybe I should give you a diagram for that very quickly. So here is a single slit. Here is the uh, the screen. The distance between them. Let me move it there without going outside the the screen here probably is good enough anyway there's no nice way to do it anyway he wants the distance here the excuse me the width of the slit and the distance here is um, 1.5 and the here is the central bright right here and then the, dis, the, the difference between them here, shall we call it delta y? That's equal to 4.75. Oops, I reached a limit. 4.75 millimeter. Okay. Uh, and then the lambda is uh, the light here is laser 633 nanometer. All right. Uh, and he wants that's it okay so what is the width in millimeter he said foot in millimeter okay so uh, just like I told you the uh, the formula y sub m for dark is m l lambda over a and then delta u y is just y2 minus y1 is that a thing so that will be when you work it out you know for uh, you take m to be 2 and m to be 1 you work it out you get 2 lambda L over A minus 1 lambda L over A and that will give me uh, lambda L over A and really seem simple problem so A equals to lambda L over delta Y and you just plug it in right so you have 633 times 10 to the negative 9 times uh, 1.5 divided by <coughs> uh, 0 0.00475 this is the number right there in millimeters so I want to convert it to meters and then you just plug it in you, you put all of that in the calculator and the width of the slit is 0.2 millimeter I kind of I kind of know that I'm right because the number is so small I mean if you get 0.2 centimeter or something you know you've done something wrong you see what I'm saying okay uh, Honestly, I'm trying to look for a hard one, but I can't find them. Can you believe it? All right, here is another one. Here is something that is uh, I haven't talked about. Uh, number 27. Okay. Let's go to the book. There we go. Okay. Uh, you want to photograph a circular diffraction pattern whose central maximum has a diameter of one centimeter the central maximum okay so we have the central maximum has a diameter of uh, one centimeter to the width okay all right uh, you have a helium neon laser lambda 633 and a 0.12 millimeter diameter pinhole which is the slit width okay how far behind the pinhole should you place the screen that's to be that's to be photographed okay so let's write down what we have here Number 27. 
So we have the width is equal to one centimeter. I have lambda is equal to 633 nanometer. And the width, uh, what is D here? Uh, D is 0.12 millimeter, right? Uh, yeah, and 0.12 millimeter diameter pinhole. Okay, this is like the diameter of the objective lens. You know what I mean? Or the width of the slit here. And he wants to know how far is it. Okay? So here is an, an interesting formula. It's in the book. It, and I, uh, if you go back to the mouse problem right here. What is it? Uh, there. This one. See this problem? Remember I told you about Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri? And if you want to get the width, there is actually a relationship, an interesting one. I mean, it comes from this one, but it includes L here, okay? And it, the relationship is this one. It's in the book. Let me tell you which equation is it. So you can go back to it. Equation 33.31. Uh, page uh, 948. Okay, and it says basically the width of the bright fringe or whatever it is, is actually equal to 2.44 lambda L over D, okay? And one way to remember it, you remember the uh, uh, Rayleigh criterion? 1.22 uh, lambda over D. This width is basically, you take Rayleigh criterion and you multiply it by two times L. Okay, why two? Because it's the you know this is the theta min. It's on one side, so the theta two. This is the uh, the width from both sides here. So that would be two times the length. Okay, so that's basically so you multiply this by two, l, and that becomes w. Basically, what you're looking at here. Okay, so we want to use this formula, and I have everything with that. So it becomes an easy problem once you know this formula. So the width in this case, he's, uh, I'm sorry, what is he looking for? Oh, he's looking for the W, sorry. Let me just take all that. Okay. And so in this case, I will uh, solve for D. D in this case, it will be equal to 2.44 lambda L over W. And then you just plug it in, easy really. 2.44 lambda 633 times 10 to the negative 9. L is equal to 4 meters. Is it 4 meters? L is, oh, I'm sorry. He's, uh, what is he looking for? He's looking for D. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's looking for L. I apologize. I'm, I'm not doing very well today. I apologize for that. I am, we are looking for L. So L in this case is going to be equal to um, DW over 2.44 uh, lambda, correct? And then we plug it in. So we have D is equal to 0.12 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, multiplied by the width, which is 10 to the negative 2, correct? It is uh, right here, right there. And divided by 2.44 lambda is equal to 6.33, negative 9. And then you calculate that. So the length in this case, it would be equal to uh, 78 centimeter. Okay. Um, number 29 is very similar to it. Number 29, equation uh, problem number 29. Uh, similar. Use the same equation. That's how I solved it uh, last night. And um, and then number 26, basically you use just Rayleigh criterion to get the value of theta. It's very... And then also number 25, also use the same formula, this formula. That's, I mean, I'm looking at my solution, how I did it last night, and I use the same thing, okay? And I don't see anything hard about this uh, rest of it, but if you have any question, please let me know. I think we'll stop here, okay? Bye-bye.